Good morning, afternoon, whatever time it may be. My name is Keith. This is Yeti's Parole Officer. It's another one of the Choice of Games in the Choice of Games series. Um, we are reading and making choices, baby. That's what we do. Uh, last time we became a man from the 1800s of Earth uh, named Jim, who was abducted by aliens and is now a parole officer for alien creatures that are put on Earth as a penal colony. Um, and we've discussed with a Yeti why he wants parole. He says he got some information, but we ain't so sure. So let's uh, continue. His behavior has been good, you start, but he isn't ready yet. Let's have another hearing in six months for reassessment. When the Yeti grumbles, you give him a sharp look. That's a lot better than another hearing in five years, you remind him. Indeed, Tweel says, we're done here. To your surprise, the Yeti follows the guards docilely, his head, big head hanging low as they leave the room. Tweel turns to you. Well done, Jim. You kept your resolve well. Tweel stands. It's been a while, Jim, since... Still looking to rise through the rank through our ranks, land a desk job someday. Desk job? I love field work. I hadn't really thought about it. Definitely. The shooting bribes the shooting bribes to see it gets old. No man, we love field work. My name's Jim. Jim people don't have desk jobs. T two don't do much in the way of shoulder pats or handshakes, but Twill relax is good, she says, because your next assignment is in you fiddle with your communicator. What is this assignment? Tweel's already leaving the room. You have to trot to keep up. Nothing that will take too much of your time. You know your you know our Yeti isn't the only hearses exiled on Earth. Honestly, you've lost count of how many of the Yeti's relatives you've run into over the decades. Which which one is this? Which one this time? You tap the screen impatiently. The Mohal monster. Oh joy! Your laughter rings off the walls. The Yeti's cousin? Tweel isn't laughing. It's been a while since anyone checked in with her. I want to make sure she's behaving. Right. A sudden thought occurs to you, and you feel a grin spread across your face. At least it's, at least it's summer in New Zealand. Fortunately, once you get yourself back to Kathmandu, the weather will pose less of a burden. There's a PGPB safe house in the Nepalese city specifically for agents checking in on the exiles assigned to the Himalayas. It's one apartment of a block tucked away on a side street. From the outside, it looks like the others, with a red balcony and narrow steps leading up to the front door. Yawning, you take the stairs to the top floor. Once there, you press your thumb to a hidden panel. Reading your genetic signature, the panel opens, revealing a set of stairs that go up to a hidden floor. Your apartment is there. By the time you reach it, you can barely keep your eyes open. What first? Hmm. I'll usually shower. If it's been a long day, shower. Good choice. After your time in the mountains, your toes are still numb. As, as steaming water gushes over your knotted muscles, you sigh with, with relief. The next morning, you rendezvous, you rendezvous just outside the city with the PGP pilot who's prepared your personal transport. It's a stubby, rounded vehicle designed for in atmosphere flight only. Though it'll never reach orbit and it's easily thrown by extreme weather, it's invisible to radar and tracking devices. The pilot salutes as you open the cockpit. She's all yours, Agent Jim. But wait, what's your ship's name? Hmm... What is our ship's name? What does it look like again? It's a stubby, rounded vehicle. We're going to call it... Oh, shoot, no. Oh, crap. I was going to try to name it something. I was going to... I was gonna... I wanted to name it like the, the flying bean or something since it looked, said it was stubby and rounded. Or the big toe. Shoot! I clicked next. I was trying to click none of these. Sorry, folks. We'll pretend that's what it's named. You board Andromeda and take the cockpit. The engines rumble as the ship lifts off. Vibrations judder all the way around your sternum and the silence crashes down. Your stomach swoops. Excuse me. That's the coffee cup. And then the ship settles into a smooth glide. The ocean leaps and flashes beneath you, and you smile as the orange-red shell of the Australian outback passes by. Another few moments over the Tasman Sea, just crossing the ditch, as your southern hemisphere friends might say, and New Zealand's rugged coastline comes into view. With half your attention caught by impossibly green hills and jagged mountains, you fumble for the Mohu Mohau Monster's file. It flashes across your screen. Convicted for running a crooked gambling ring with her cousin, the Yeti, two prior charges, both dropped on technicalities, currently settled in New Zealand's Coromandel region. No misdemeanors. 
Thick trees mass the ground below. Carefully, you pilot Andromeda between them, finally coming to rest. After giving the Mohau monster's file on one final scan, you open the cockpit, and possibly pure air floods your lungs. You sit around for you just sit for a moment, breathing in, as birds shriek to each other overhead. Finally, you climb from the ship. Ferns covered the forest floor. The fa their fronds are wrapping around your ankles. You indicate a light. Shows up. The Mohau monster's nearby. What's your plan? Uh, that wasn't a very good New Zealander accent either. Um, I'll approach her directly. I'll communicate from the ship. I'll sneak up on her. Let's sneaky up on her and see what this girl's doing. You creep through the dense underbrush. Clumps of ferns block your view, but that's alright. It makes it harder for the Mohau monster to see you. Every shade of green crowds around you, along with the most shades of brown. Most shades of brown. Smiling, you flip over a silver leaf fern, admiring a shiny white underside. The, smartest, the forest smells alive. Now that's Australian. Dang it. Jermaine. Jermaine Clement. Reese Darby. New Zealand. Toothbrush. Nah. I know. I gotta practice. It's really hard to do accents on on the video because there's so much pressure because I don't want to sit here and try it forever like if I'm doing it by myself I can do accents and practice and then finally nail one down but then you just kind of have to jump into it on here and if you don't get it you don't get it you look like a fool so I look like a fool and that's okay but you're not just here to admire the scenery the soil cushions your footfalls as you pad forward but you can track the Mohau monster the old-fashioned way she'll never hear you coming but it might take a while or you can use your all-purpose communicator it's fast but your yours has been beeping erratically lately it might be low on batteries um let's track her on foot there's too much deep I, I'm feel like I want if it's I get the option I want to be kind of old-fashioned still from the 1800s you know there's too much detail in the forest. The call of the Tui birds rattles your concentration. Everywhere you turn, there's another unfurling frond, another twisting path. Another, after a few fruitless minutes, you can see defeat and slink back to the ship. Safely ensconced within the walls of your ship, you bring Andromeda's external communication system online. Pulling the microphone close to you, you think for a moment and then say, This is the Pan Galactic Prisons Bureau, Mohau Monster. If you're here, show yourself or... Or what? Hmm... I'll have to eat this path level all alone. Um, I feel like I want to be... I mean, I don't... Just gambling. She's not so mean. I feel like she's probably nice. Maybe. I'll have to eat this. I don't even know what... Pavlova? Pa Pavlova? I don't know. All alone, but we'll be nice to her. The branches shake, shabby shoulders come into view, followed by an ape-like head. Hurriedly, you disembark and race towards the Mohau monster. The Mohau monster grins, revealing sharp teeth. Kia Ora, she says, arms folded behind her back. Her voice is soft and low, almost a purr. Come to check on, check up on me, have you? You smile tightly. Part of the job. Move it behind the Mohau monster catches your eye. Wait, what's that? The Mohau monster shuffles her feet, staring at the ground, then produces a struggling sheep from behind her. Sigh. You shake your head. Are you stealing that sheep? She snorts. Look at you, mate. Look at you, mate. I'm going off stroppy. Country's chock-a-block with sheep. More sheep than blokes, I reckon. Your jaw drops. The last time you made an official visit, you noticed the Mohau monster had picked up <laughs> more of the local slang than her cousin. It's worse now. You you didn't answer the question. Not thick, are you? The Mohau monster strokes the sheep. I was taking it back to its batch, returning to, returning to the bloke who lost, what lost it. Now sheep, sheep are thick. I like to help them when they, I like to help them when they wander off. I'm trying, guys. Tell me if you hate the accent or not. <laughs> um, yeah, she was trying to help the sheet back. Oh, sure. You raise an eyebrow. I find that hard to believe. Well, it ain't my brekkie. Bugalugs, if that's what you're thinking. The Mohau monster's eyes narrow and the sheet wriggles in her grasp. I wasn't about to nick it. Can't prove I was. Can you? Do you even want to? What do you do? Oh, you're... You're asking me? So the game is asking me what... Um, the Mohau monster's eyes near on the sheep, rules in her grass. I'll turn a blind eye to this one if she's going to give it back. Biting back a sigh, you shake your head. You know you're only making things harder for yourself when you resort to antics like this. The Mohau monster peers through the thick curtain of, of fur following into her eyes. And? 
Next time, I'll have to inform Commissioner Tweel. But you won't this time? You hesitate. No. She springs to unfold your hand in her paw. I'm dead chuffed, mate. Thanks. Ow, my hand. <laughs> you wriggle free. Just don't do it again. The sheep takes advantage of the distraction to hightail it through the bush. The mohaw monster winks. I won't. All right, you rub your you rub your hand. I need to he I need to head to town. You'll be informed of the results the results of our meeting in due time. The township of Thames nestles at the so southwestern end of the Coromandel Peninsula, not far from the Mohaw Ranges. Rolling green hills plunge towards the sea, ending in cliffs battered by the waves. I guess if I knew New Zealand more, maybe I would know about the Mohaw monster. Like that it's a real thing that they talk about. But I don't know. Uh, small Victorian buildings cling to the space between hills and ocean. Salty air tickles your nose as you wander the quiet streets. You love time to play with a tourist, but when you're on PGP missions, PGP missions, puga puga, puga puga puga, puga puga, missions, you know there's one place you have to visit, the pub. Such hardship. Um, when I played Choice of Rebels, uh, the the author of it actually contacted me. Um, and he made a comment about how I was pronouncing words, and he said, like, oh, they're just made up words. You can pronounce them any way you like. I have, I didn't decide how they should be pronounced. Um, but this one, this looks like these are words that I that are actual words that maybe I should know how to pronounce. So hopefully I don't get an, an, a letter from, or an email from this author saying that I'm an idiot and who doesn't know how to pronounce Mohaw or whatever it is. Mohaw. The Mohaw monster. From past visits, you know that the Tumu Hotel serves as a local watering hole. The room seems smaller than you remember. More shadows in the corner and grime along the bar. Glasses stand in crooked lines along the bar. The rear one's coated with a fine layer of dust. I think I'll sit by the window. You like seeing what's going on. You press close to the window, watching the activity on the street. This time of year, the tourists flood the Thames flood Tim's. You're used to them. Sometimes you wonder what it'd be like to join them, but then perhaps you've been with the PGPB too long. You're different from the humans here, and you know it. A young woman hands you a menu. It's getting near supper, and you doubt you'll be able to pick up any useful information on an empty stomach. What are you having tonight? Um, bangers and mash, mince pie with tomato sauce, a vegetarian option, bang, lamb with mint jelly, fish and chips. I had fish and chips when I was in Scotland. I enjoyed it. Um, excellent choice. Your food arrives quickly and soon you're tucking in. After a long day's work, your stomach feels pinched, so you spend a few moments absorbed in the rapid movement of knife and fork to your mouth and back. Only a few moments, though. You are a professional. Once the edge of your hunger is dull, you lean back in your chair and listen. All, all blacks will take it, I reckon, declared the man from across the room. Dead chuffed. So I says to him, if you're nipping out in the way, out of the way for Kai, you might ask your Tama if he wants to come, eh? And then a shrill American accent. No, I swear, I got a photo. It looks like a Bigfoot or something. Aha. Suddenly, you're, you angle your chair so that you're facing the speaker. He's a young man with lank brown hair and a spray of freckles across his nose. An overstuffed backpack. It's top lashed with a bungee cord and secured with a heavy padlock. It sits at his feet. He's waving his, he's waving his phone around the table. See, no, no one back home has ever heard of this thing. This Mo... Mohaw... The Mohaw Monster? I am pronouncing it maybe correctly. The old man, an old man says quietly. That's it. The young man drags his finger across his phone screen. It startles you sometimes how quickly human technology has changed. Sometimes you wonder if Earth's alien convicts are responsible. I've been research, I've been searching for it, and now I've got proof. He grins. I could get good for good cash for these, right? Time to intervene. You need to do something about this young man. But what? So I can't borrow his phone, apparently. Um. Maybe I'll act friendly to draw this kid out. Ask for copies. I'll wait until he gets up. Ask the old man for his opinion. You go over and introduce yourself, pasting a smile on. Couldn't help overhearing. This Mohaw monster sounds, re sounds really interesting. I'm Jim, by the way. The young man barely looks at you. John, John Stetson. Have you been in New Zealand long, John, you ask? He shakes his head. Just a few weeks. Came to find the beast. And how did you find her, it? The young man puffs himself up. Spent a few nights in the bush. Just me, my tent, and my camera. Sheep were going missing, see? So I figured I had to be the monster. It had to be the monster, of course. Cursing the Mohaw monster, you nod toward his phone. All the pictures on there? I take it? Yep. 
You fished two hundreds from your wallet. Good thing you changed some of your standard currency units to American dollars earlier. Look, I'll give you these if you delete them. John's eyes widen. Why? Because it's bad for the bush. Having people tramp through looking for some ridiculous legend. You snap. New Zealand is a unique ecology. Nuts like you are the are only threatening that. He goes quiet. I hadn't thought of that, he says at last. All right. Nice work, Jim. You handled the situation with John very well. When the pub closes, you can't help smiling as he ambles into the night. Those pictures won't be a problem now. Just as you're taking a second to catch your breath, your communicator flashes urgently. You take it out. Twill is looking for you, and she wants to talk to you face to face. So, you have to wait until you're settled in the Andromeda. You call up the screen and wait, drumming your fingers on the armrest until Twill's beat countenance fills your field of vision. Agent, she barks. Yo. What is it? You try to ignore the feathers bristling around her face. Glow in the dark watches, chocolate bars, croquet sets. Maybe after all this time, Twill has finally snapped. You compose yourself. I'm sorry, Commissioner, I don't understand. We interrupted a shipment of goods being processed on the Spheron. Twill's large yellow eyes narrow. Illegally imported goods. Earth goods. The bottom drops from your stomach. Uh oh. Again. How did Earth goods wind up on Spheron, you asked? I know it's not the most law abiding planet, but. That's the question of the day, isn't it? Even separated by a screen, Twill's voice makes you shrivel a little inside. Because the only extraterrestrial inhabitants of Earth are our exiles, the, ex- the exiles that you're supposed to be monitoring. Uh, no one's gotten off world, you say quickly, I'm sure of it. Then they're helping a third party smuggle goods between Earth and Spheron. Twill shakes her head. It's a smuggling ring operating right under your nose. I can't believe it, you murmur. Tendrils of horror curl around your chest. This whole time. What's done is done, Twill says briskly. The important thing is stopping the traffic. I'll add some standard currency units to your budget. Use them wisely. As you try to stammer out your thanks, Twill dismisses you with a wave of her hand. Now, Agent Braun is usually our top aid, top choice for off-planet missions, but she's injured herself again. Explosives related, I believe. Expect a PGP transport to reach you in the next hour. You're going to sphere on. True to Twill's word, a transport arrives quickly. It is piloted by another tattoo, but you're... But to your surprise, a small bat-like chira- chiroptera leaps out and scapers to your ship. What are you doing, you shout. The chiroptera wi- waggles his enormous ears and spreads his claws wide, revealing the membrane stretching between his forearms and sides. It's taking your ship to PGPD do- PGPB docks for you, the the Atlantic one. Atlanta? Atlantis. That's the one. <laughs> she'll, be, she'll be waiting when you get back. The, the chiroptera hops inside. Have fun on Spheron. As the door to the transport closes, you suppress a shudder. You're not sure fun is the right word. Not at all. Well, I will say this is definitely an interesting an interesting story so far. Old Jim is... He's in deep, I suppose. Um, but, yeah, I hope that you are having a good time watching this video. Um, we're going to go to the next chapter for the next one. Um... I imagine this one will be a lot like maybe Choice of Rebels in that um, we'll have to use those funds to decide what we do with them and stuff. But maybe not. I'm not really sure. But um, these games are pretty fun to play, fun to read. Um, and I hope that you're enjoying them. I hope that you're you're clicking and, and sharing and, and doing all the stuff that you might do. Um, please do come back. Please leave a comment for me. Please like. I love talking to people in the comments whenever they do comments. So no matter what you got to say, be sure to leave a comment and I will try to respond to it. Um, with so few right now, I can usually respond to everybody. Multiple times, sometime. Um, either way, thank you so much for watching. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, do all that cool jazz, and I love you very much. Bye-bye.